Um, good morning guys, so this morning is Monday the 23rd of March. Um, I suppose my new sign-in is going to be wash your hands, okay, keep washing your hands. Um, the, so I'm now going to take a look at three questions, 2018 question 5, 2017 question 3 and 2017 question 8. I'm going to do those now. And then for study this evening, you guys are going to go through 2016 question 4 and 2014 question 9. If you want to tackle these questions before me, you can pause the video now. And then when you have these three questions done, you can then play it, okay? And maybe you won't even need to play it. Maybe you'll get the answers correct. Don't, don't forget that you can check your answers at the back of the, at the, back of the exam papers, okay? Um, thanks, guys. Um, so keep washing your hands. And I'll see you again on Wednesday. I'll be talking my way through these questions now, okay? Hey, good morning, gentlemen. So this is 2017, and it's paper one, and we're doing question three, okay? So let's see how we get on with this. Um, so question three, part A, is find the two values of x for which 3x squared minus 6x minus 8 is equal to zero. So you guys should be able to, at this stage, spot that that is a quadratic equation. So we've got a quadratic equation, so let's write it out. Um, 3x squared minus 6x minus 8 is equal to 0. Quadratic equation, so immediately we think minus b formula. So we're going to have a go at using the minus b formula with this. So we write out x equals, big long line there, minus b plus or minus the square root of b, squared minus 4ac, and that's all over 2a. Are you okay with that? And it's b, 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 a, c, a. So let's throw in our b, so that's a minus 6, minus 6, b, b, a, c, a. And we bash that into our calculator and we get out um, minus 6 plus the square root of start bracket minus 6 squared minus 4 bracket 3 close bracket bracket minus 8 close bracket downstairs 2 bracket 3 equals SD so it's equal to 2.91 so that's the answer you guys should have gotten there or x is equal to we scroll back into it we turn our plus into a minus and we get um, minus 0 0.91. So x will equal 2.9 or x is equal to minus 0 0.9. And that is to one decimal place as requested here. So those are our two answers. Um, okay, so nothing too weird there. Very straightforward question. It's nice to get a pr um, just a bit of straightforward algebra without any kind of storytelling in it. Great. You should be getting full marks in that sort of a question. Um, can the student use a skill? Yes, full marks. Excellent. Okay, onto this part here then. So onto part B. Find the coordinates of the minimum point of the function f of x equals 3x squared minus 6x minus 8. So this function here, and we, if we were to draw it, would it be U-shaped or would it be N-shaped? So we take a look at the sign of this guy here, and he's currently positive. So if he's positive, we end up with a U-shape. Sorry, if he's positive, we end up with a U-shape, which is this guy here, obviously. Sorry about that. So we're look, and that makes sense because we're talking about a minimum. So we're looking for we're looking for the coordinates of that point down there. Now, um, so that's f of x, so we're going to find out what f prime of x is equal to. So we go um, 6x minus 6. And at this point down there, the tangent will be perfectly horizontal. So what's the slope of perfectly horizontal lines? Well, the slope of perfectly horizontal lines is 0. So we now have 6x minus 6 equals 0. We're looking for x, so x is equal to 6, so x by itself will equal to 6 over 6, so x is equal to 1. So at this point here, the coordinate of the x value is 1. We still don't know what the coordinate of the y value is. We do know the coordinate of the x value is now 1. To find out the value of the y, well, we want to know what does the function equal when we input a 1. So what does this guy equal when we input a 1? 
And to work that out, let's do it. So f of 1 is equal to 3 bracket 1 squared minus 6 bracket 1 minus 8. So that will equal um, 3 bracket 1 squared minus 6 open bracket 1 close bracket minus 8. And that's equal to minus 11. So the coordinates of this guy here is 1 comma minus 11. And that's the coordinates of the minimum. And there is no part C. So what was that? That was 25 marks for that. 25 marks for that, probably less than five minutes of work. And you should be getting full marks in that. So that's about 8% of paper one, just on that question. Okay, if it's 8% of paper one, that means it's 4% of your leaving cert. So if you get under nine questions like that, you've passed your leaving cert, okay? So that's what we need to be targeting, these really simple, easy questions. We should be getting full marks in them. The next question we're going to take a look at is going to be on paper um, 2018, paper one. So it's paper one, 2018, and we're going to be looking at question five. And we can see question five is probably going to be a functions question because it has this big function drawn on it, okay? So immediately we, we're kind of pricking up that we are now in a functions question. So let's let's go through this. Um, so the diagram on the right shows the graph of a function f. Write down the coordinates of a, b, and c. So the coordinates of a will be um, 0, 6, and then coordinates of b will be minus 2, 0, and coordinates of c then will be 3, 0. So there are the coordinates of a, b, and c. Now, we now need to show that the function can be written as f of x equals minus x squared plus x plus 6. So basically, we want to check that each of these three points here slots into this function. So each of these three points, we want to check that they fit into this function over here. Um, so maybe if we write out the function um, three times, we'll leave spaces. And well, let's do that. That might be a good thing to do. So plus, plus 6 equals minus 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. Um, okay, now into this one here, I'm going to put in a zero, that zero there, and I hope that the function will spit out a six. So let's just check that, zero squared is zero, minus zero plus zero is still zero, plus six is six. Yep, so the first one, a, is definitely on our function. Let's try the second one, b. So for the second one, I'm going to input a minus 2 into here and here. Let's do that now. Minus 2, minus 2. And I could put that into my calculator if I wanted. Let's do that. So, so minus star bracket minus 2 squared minus 2 plus um, star bracket minus 2 plus 6 equals 0. So that holds up and that's pretty good. So that 0 there corresponds to that 0 there. So when I put in a minus 2 into my function, I get out a 0. That's good. Um, so we can now say that b is on our function. So let's now take a look at part c. Um, so part c is 3, 0. So part c is, or point c is 3, 0. So I'm going to input a 3 here. And what do I hope the function will output? I hope it will output a 0. So let's try that. Minus start bracket 3, close bracket squared, plus open bracket 3, close bracket plus 6, equals 0. Yes. So therefore, each of these three points here, each of these three points are on this function. So this function must be this function here. Job done. Now, show using calculus, show using calculus that the maximum point of f of x is this thing here. Show using calculus that the maximum point of f of x is this thing here. Okay, so, Calculus for you guys means differentiate. So we're going to differentiate our function from up here. So that's our function f of x, and it says using calculus. So using calculus for you means differentiate. So let's differentiate that first of all. f prime of x is equal to minus 2x plus 1. So that's pretty good. But then we have another hint in our question. It asks for the maximum point. 
That's for the maximum point. So because this guy up here is a negative quadratic, it means that our function will look like that. In fact, we know what it looks like because there's a picture of it up there. So we're asked for this point up here. We want to know where is that point? What's the, what's the coordinates of it? Well, we kind of know that if, if I differentiate this thing, if I differentiate this function, I get a formula for all the slopes. And at the very tip, the slope will be what? The slope of a perfectly horizontal line. So the slope at a perfectly horizontal line, or the slope of a perfectly horizontal line, is zero. So the slope of this line up here, the slope of that tangent line at the very tip is going to be zero. So therefore we can let the formula for all of the slopes equal zero. That's the formula for all of the slopes. We can let that equal zero. So we then go, and we don't go yet, let's make it black. We go minus two x must equal minus one. So x must equal minus one over minus two. So x must equal one over two. And that corresponds to 0 0.5. So that's pretty good. So x must equal 0 0.5. So I've now found out what the, what the x value is of this point over here. It's 0 0.5. But I now have to work out what the y value is. And hopefully it's going to be 6.25. Hopefully. That's, so our function this guy here, our function up there, he gives us all of the outputs if we have inputs. So when we input an x, we get our f of x. If I input a 6.25 in for x, sorry, if I input a 0 0.5, sorry about that. If I input a 0 0.5, I'll get out my f of 0 0.5. So it's the output when x is 0 0.5. That's what I'm looking for here. So let's do that question now. Um, so I'll just write out my function, f of, something equals minus placeholder plus something plus six and into those spaces i'm going to put in 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 so hopefully when i click my calculator here i should get out a minus start bracket 0 0.5 hopefully it will give me um 6.25 6 equals 25 over 4. I hit my SD button. And it's 6.25. So that is um, 2018 question 5 done. Some really easy stuff up here. What are the points? Find the coordinates of points. Like that should be full marks there. Show us the function, this thing here, putting, putting x values in to get corresponding y values. Do it for all three of these points up here. Again, that's full marks for that. Using calculus here, you should be able to get down as far as here yourselves. Yeah, you should definitely be able to get down around here. So you're talking about getting to 0 0.5, and then from there, you know, you could nearly guess what to do to how to find the corresponding y value, okay? So you should be doing really well in questions like that. Um, the next question we're going to take a look at will be on the Leaving Certificate 2018 papers, and it's paper one again. So it's 2018 paper one, and it's question eight. So we're going to take a look at question eight, paper one, 2018 now. Um, so let's read through this. Um, the amount in appropriate units of a certain medicinal drug in the bloodstream t hours after it has been taken can be estimated by the function. So we have a function here. So we're in a functions question, guys. So that means that, well, it's highly likely that somewhere in question eight, in the entire of question eight, you will probably be asked to differentiate. Okay, somewhere in here, you will be asked to differentiate. Looks like a really long question. It is 65 marks after all. Okay, so that's going to be like um, maybe two and a half times your average kind of 25 mark question. Um, so let's answer our first question. Um, so use the drug amount function, this thing up here, to show that the amount of the drug in the bloodstream four hours after the drug has been taken is 224 units. So we're given a value for t. t is going to be 4 for us. So into this function up here, we're going to slot in a value for 4. So it's going to be minus bracket 4 cubed plus 4.5 bracket 
four squared plus 54 bracket four. And I have to now input that into my calculator. So I go minus start bracket four cubed plus 4.5 bracket four close bracket squared plus 54 bracket four close bracket equals 224. Okay, job done. Handy marks there, okay? Just throwing in the number four. We're then asked, use the function, use the function to complete the table below. Use the function to complete the table below. Um, I would highly recommend that you would use your calculator table function to do this job. So um, I might put a video up, I might actually already have one up, so I'll link to it if I have it already up. If not, I, I will put a video up tomorrow maybe. Sorry, I'm speaking on Sunday, so it's gonna be Monday. Maybe Monday evening I'll put this video up on how to use the table function. We're pretty good at doing it anyway, from, from, from what I can remember in class, but we'll have a go at it now. So um, we're gonna input um, this function here as the function, and we're gonna start at zero, we're gonna end at nine, and we're gonna go up in steps of one, two, three. So we're gonna go up in steps of one. Okay, so the system, I'll call out the system, you won't be able to see it. So it's mode um, three f of x is minus alpha x cubed. And cubed, I'm gonna to have to go with that guy there. Cubed plus 4.5 alpha x squared plus 54 alpha x equals we want to start at zero. We want to go up as far as nine. We want to go up in steps of one, yeah. So from our calculator, it looks like the first two are correct. And then we have one, one, eight, one, sorry. We didn't have one, one, eight. And then we have one, seven, five point five. Then we have two, two, four. Then we have two, five, seven point five. Then we have two seven zero. Then we have two five five point five. Then we have two zero eight. And then we have one two one point five. So that's using our table function, our calculator. I would, I would ordinarily have to do that again just to make sure my answers were correct. However, because they gave us some values in here, I can be pretty certain that the other ones were correct when I saw these values here coming up on my own calculator. Okay, so what's then part C? So part C is draw a graph of the function. Okay, so we'll need, we'll need this information up here. So I'm gonna need this information here. Um, so the handiest thing for me to do, you probably won't be able to do this, will be to copy this out. So let's see how this works. It may not work. Let's see if I can do it. Um, copy, copy, and go down here maybe somewhere I can see it, and maybe in this corner over here. Paste. Oh, that's not very good, is it? Um, delete, something weird happened there. Let's try it again. Um, duplicate, maybe? Hmm. So let's, um, let's go for two, over 224 um, 57.5 and 0 and that's 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 this is just so I can see the information because I, I I'm very limited in my screen size here so I'm gonna I'm gonna copy that and copy Bring it down here and I can paste it in there. And that will do me quite nicely if I leave it up there. Yeah. So um actually I could bring that down a tad maybe down to there. Yeah. Okay. So um first point is zero zero. So let's put a let's put a kind of a biggish dot. At zero zero, so down there, and then we've one at fifty seven point five one. Fifty seven point five is probably about there somewhere. Two is one one eight. Two is one one eight. And um, one one eight, maybe about there. 
3 is 175.5, so up there, 4 is 224, so up there, 5 is 257.5, 5 is 257.5, so up there somewhere, 6 is 270, 6 is 270, so up there, um, 7 is 255.5, 255.5 8 is 208 208 is that what I wrote? 208, yeah um, 208, so over here 9 is 121.5 121.5 down there. Okay, so where are we asked to do? Yeah, draw the function. So let's um, let's change my. That was my pen after dying. Brilliant. <laughs> okay, so let's let this um warm up here. Get some electrons back into it. Um. So we have information here. In our table, and then we plot that information with the blue dots. Let's see how we charged. Yes, okay. So I can now join up my dots. I'm going to try and make a smooth curve. And I probably should put in somewhere on this, I probably should put in what function I'm after drawing, and I'm after drawing the function um, C bracket T. Okay. Um, now, use your graph to estimate each of the following values. In each case, show your work on the graph above. Use your graph to estimate each of the following values. In each case, show your work on the graph above. The amount of the drug in the bloodstream after three and a half hours. Okay, so three and a half hours, that's on this axis down here. So I go to three and a half on that axis. Um, what color will I choose? Will I choose green? So I got the three and a half there. And I can go all the way up, all the way up, all the way up until I hit the function. Okay, and then I can go horizontally across. Okay, and I'm going to call that maybe um, 195 or something. Maybe 195, 195. How long after taking the drug will the amount of the drug in the bloodstream be 100 units? So that's this value here. That's so on that axis I go over. And that went a bit pear-shaped on me. I go over to there and then straight vertically down. So maybe, maybe 1.5, um, 1 1.7 maybe? 1.7 hours. And 1.7 hours. And this is uh, units. Okay, um, I probably should check the marking scheme to get the exact value of that for you, but I think it's going to be about 1.7 because they're down here. Okay, next job. Sorry, they will want to see you drawing lines, okay? There will be marks going for drawing the lines, so even if you're not exactly correct, you'll get the marks for drawing your lines. Maybe we'll put arrows there. So this one is going this way, and this one is going this way. Um, use the drug amount function to find, in terms of T, the rate at which the drug amount is changing after T hours. The rate. So the keyword in there, guys, is the rate. The rate. The rate. So we're in a functions question. So we have it kind of in the back of our minds that we probably will be asked to differentiate. And this is the code word here that says differentiate. So let's differentiate that. So rates of change is all about calculus for you guys differentiating. So let's differentiate our function. So we're going to write C prime of T. 
will equal minus 3t squared plus 9t plus 54. The rate at which the drug amount is changing. So that's it. That's the job done. That's our answer there. Wasn't too bad. Um, so this 3 here, he comes down, and that's what we have 3 there. And this 2 here, he comes down, and he multiplies the 4.5, so we end up at 9. And he gets reduced down to a 1. But we would never really bother writing that 1. We could if we want to, but we can, it's kind of just a waste of ink. Okay, use your answer to part E, use your answer to this part up here, to find the rate at which the drug amount is changing after 4 hours. So that's the rate at which it's changing, and all of the rates of change are in there, but we want to know specifically at 4 hours, so we want to know our t is equal to what? Yeah, I'm going to stick in the number 4 into there. So that's going to equal... Um, minus 3 bracket 4 squared plus 9 bracket 4 close bracket plus 54 equals 42. So E part 2, the answer is going to be 42, and that's in units, is it? Uh, the rate uh, units, um, units per hour. So that's the rate at which it's changing at 42 units per hour. Use your okay, so now let's take a look at part three here, E part three. So E part three says, um, use your answer to this point, this thing up here. Use this thing up here to find the maximum. So at a maximum, we can say that our function for the derivative minus three t squared plus nine t plus 54, that thing must equal zero at a maximum. So at a maximum, this whole thing down here, that must equal zero. That's pretty nice. So this thing here, that's just a quadratic. So into the minus b formula with him. So um, t this time equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that minus needs to include in the fraction. So that's going to be b, which is 9. 9 minus 3, 54 minus 3. So t is going to equal um, t is equal to minus 3 or t is equal to Six. So we want between zero hours and nine hours for this thing here. So we're going to accept this as our answer. Now, that's the time at which it happens. So let's just check that on our graph. The time at which it happens is six, which is here. So that's, the, that's when the time at the maximum happens. And our t at six, we know our t at six is... Our t at 6 is 270. So it's 270. So 6 hours at 270 units. Um, use your answer to part EI. Yeah, we've done that. Okay. Yeah. There's. Um, we probably should have done some calculations to get this rather than using our previous calculations. But we've already calculated, so I don't think there will be a problem with that. Okay. Next job. Um, use your answer to part EI to show that the drug amount in the bloodstream is decreasing seven hours after the drug has been taken. Explain your reasoning. Okay. So. Um, so we've we have this thing up here and seven hours. So lads, even if you don't know the explanation. What are you going to do for t? You're going to put in what value? Yeah, exactly. You're going to put in the value for 7, wherever there's a t. I'm going to nab him. Um, copy. 
I'm going to paste them down here. And let's put them in there. Okay. I want to get rid of that. I want to get rid of that. And let's put in a minus. I think that was a nine. Okay. And I can get rid of that as well. Make it a bit neater. 54. Okay. So wherever there's a T, I'm going to just turn into a seven. So it's minus three bracket seven squared plus nine bracket seven plus 54. And that's equal to um, minus three bracket seven squared plus nine bracket seven plus 54 equals minus 30. So we've done quite a lot of it work here. Okay, we've done kind of the hard work. We just need to understand what this answer means. So this thing here is a formula for all of the slopes. Remember that? That's a formula for all of the slopes. And when we're going uphill, we have positive slope. And when we're going downhill as we go from left to right, it's negative slope. So that means, this thing here means that if our answer is negative, then we're going downhill at that point. So when, when t is 7, the slope is, is a negative slope. So the curve must be going downhill when x, or when t is 7. So the slope is negative. Therefore, a function is going downhill. And that concludes question eight on the 2018 paper. So don't forget to have a go at these study questions.